Welcome to episode 6 of Emulating Jack Young. I'd just like to start today's video by saying thank you to everyone that has been supportive on this series. It really is very much appreciated. Now in today's video we're going to be holidaying another three seasons until our players are 29 and just about to turn 30 years old. And then the next video is going to be an extra video where I look at every single player, all 120 players in detail, It'll be a bit of a marathon, but so we can have a look at what they've won in their career, their, their biography and their attributes of course as well, just to see how they've got on and how they've progressed over the years. I think age 30 is a good time to do it, We're, that's to basically the end of your prime as a footballer and from that point onwards generally you start to decline and we will see... see players retiring as well so I think that's the best time to do that extra video but let's get on with today's one first of all as you can see I've already holidayed one season we're 27 years old now 27 is kind of the point where I see that is your pinnacle of your career you should be playing your best football about age 27 28 in my opinion it's not always the case of course sometimes you get early bloomers like Michael Owen who are sensational early on in their career then su suffer from injuries later on and then there's late bloomers a bit like Jamie Vardy last season and, and Dimitri Payet last season who just suddenly towards the end of their 20s just bloomed into incredible players so it's not always the case that they're playing the best football at this age but generally it is and you can see there's quite a few players with 190 or more on current abilities the highest two players are Josh Holling for PSG our Welsh central midfielder who moved to PSG for £72 million and there's been a lot of money involved in his transfers over this. Remember he started at Portsmouth and in League 2 and you just think oh maybe he's not going to be that great a place. Portsmouth have decided to sign him, he can't be that good in playing in League 2 but he moved to Aston Villa, progressed nicely there, moved to Dortmund and now he's at PSG and he's the joint best player in terms of current ability from our players. It's pretty sensational really. Um, Jay Young Park is the other one who's got 197, our South Korean attacking midfield, 129 caps for South Korea. We always seem to see that the sort of South Korean, Japanese type players, they seem to get a lot of caps for their country. They're very loyal. They don't seem to retire from international duty that early and they do get a lot of caps. But Jay Young Park, our South Korean Jack Young, of course, is now playing for Bayern Munich and having a very nice time there. Santa Claus is also up there, 196 current ability. Sam Williams, Kagu Commons, Frank O'Hara's got 195. There's a bit of a gap down to Zebu Nation, 191, but these are still world-class players if I scroll down. Anything down to 175, I would say, as I've said before, is world-class in my opinion on the game. But some guys have been saying, oh, I'm only 150 current ability. Um, I'm okay, but I'm not that good. 150 current ability is definitely good enough to be a top Premier League player, by the way. If you look on the editor at the Premier League clubs, there's a lot of players with, you know, as low as 120 current ability that are playing in the Premier League regularly. So it's really not a bad rating to only be on 150. That is still very, very good. Um, I, I understand because when you match yourself against some of these other players, you don't look so good. But you honestly are a very good player. Even the ones down here in the 130s, 140s, just still good players. You know, Brian Drew is playing for Sevilla. Maybe not. Oh no, he is a regular. 30 appearances this season. Banana playing for Fulham. I think they're in the Premier League unless they've been relegated. Yeah, they have been relegated. But still, Championship is a very good level of football as well. Danny Wanegio plays for Chelsea but he's towards the bottom here. Of course, he's only really a substitute as you can see there but still a quality player down here. If we look then at a few other things then. Current reputation, this hasn't really changed over the years. Kagu Commons still towards the top. He's still got the, the same old players at the top of this list. Caps wise, Jay Young Park is top with those 129 caps. Mohamed Hendy Jr. doing really well. Sander Tielemann has reached 100 caps for Holland, which is very impressive. Scotland Serenity, Tommy D. Daniel Carter the third for South Korea also doing well. Dixie Normus has reached 100 caps for USA, our guy playing for Spurs moved there quite a long time ago so he's uh, someone did say you know the way to emulate Jack Young is to only play for one club but perhaps if you play for a, one club for a long time that's still being very loyal so Dixie Normus has been loyal to Spurs hasn't he that's for sure uh, moving on to who else has got 100 caps we've got Palmer Koo for 
Malaysia, Jack Old for Austria, Matthias Orchard for Australia and Declan Frew for Scotland. They've all reached 100 caps. Scotland have done well on this save, as you would expect, because we've, <laughs> we've given them a lot of players. Graham, uh, Gordon Strachan is in charge of Scotland. They're sixth in the world rankings and they've been towards the top for a long, long time. As you can see, they've done really, really well on this. I don't know if they won the Under-21 Championship. Yeah, they did, 2021, when a lot of our players were, of course, at that age. So that definitely makes sense. And the under-19s, they won... Oh, they, I don't think they won on this, but... Yeah, they won the Under-21 Championship when a lot of our players were flying high at youth level, of course. In terms of goals, the top goal scorer is Daniel Carter III with 76 goals in 105 games for South Korea. That is very impressive. Daniel Gannon, 73 goals for Ireland. Sean Watson, 67 goals in 83 caps for Canada. Someone was moaning at me in the last episode saying I was biased towards Canadian soccer. Honestly, I have no bias towards anyone. I just want to put that out there. Comments don't annoy me generally, but when someone's sort of assuming I've got something against you, your nation, your nation's football, then that annoys me because I literally have no prejudice against anyone. I I I love the world. I I but I think you can you guys can tell. I'm I'm not a hateful person, I'm a loving person. So when someone says that, it does annoy me a little bit because honestly, I have nothing against you. I have nothing against Canada because I didn't show Sean Watson in the last video. I'm not showing every player. I can't show every player in these videos, but in the extra video, I will. So I will look through every single player. So if you haven't been shown previously, I do apologize, but you know, I can only focus on certain players I'm guessing the ones that stand out. I've tried to look at some of the middle guys. If we go down, let's have a look at Christian Holland, for example, an English Man City player. 74 caps for England. He's, you know, I've not really shown him, but he's managed to get 74 caps for England. He's a very impressive player. It's just he hasn't quite stood out as much as others, of course. So that's my little rant over. Um, hopefully that's, that's made you happy now, showing Sean Watson. Moving on to all-time appearances, you can see Sander Thieleman leading the way still. We've got Daniel Jordan and Robbie Watson with over 500 appearances for their club as well. But there's a lot of players with over 400 now, which is very impressive. I don't know if we'll have anyone hit 1,000 in this series. It would be nice, but probably unlikely at this stage. Daniel Carter III, 237 goals. He's the top goal scorer now. I don't think he was previously. Ben Chapman's up there. He's sort of snuck up from nowhere and suddenly started scoring lots and lots of goals for AC Milan over the years. 16 this season, so he's up to second place, just ahead of Rousey, who isn't quite first choice striker now. He was at PSG to start with, but his appearance, the starting appearances have declined slightly over the years. A few more this year, and he did score 23 goals. His goals to game ratio is ridiculously good for PSG. Brad Stewart up there as well, and Sander Tielemann, and Kevin Tejada has broken 200 goals, as well as Dr. Mister, a Nigerian Bayern Munich striker who's been there for a number of years now, scored 15 goals this season. If we look at value, actually, we look at average rating, won't show everything, but top average rating once again is the guy that won three World Player of the Year awards in a row, remember? Eric Sivenen, our Finnish maestro for Man City. He is a sensational talent. He's certainly not got the best current ability though, 175, and he was he has won World Player of the Year three times in a row. So you don't need to be up there on 195 current ability to win the big awards. He's only just classified as world class in a way, I would say, 175 current ability. But he's managed to win loads of awards, and he's at a big club, he's earning a lot of money, he's worth a lot of money. He's just very efficient. With his game time, he's got 26 goals and 27 goals, 27 assists this season. 8.5 average rating. That is why he's winning World Player of the Year awards. Scotland Serenity up there as well, having a really good time. He's another very impressive player. And he's only just moved to Barcelona for what I would say is a bargain. Because he was an incredible player for Chelsea over the years. And now this season, 13 goals and 17 starts and 2 sub-appearances for Barcelona. And then 8.52 average rating. It's strange he didn't play every game. It's not because he was injured, they just didn't play him in every single game. Value-wise, Kevin Tojeda is still top. £76 million. Someone did in the comment section uh, in the last video actually have a look to see who the highest transfer fee was. There was a couple of transfers over £100 million, I think. 
Um, I don't think Kevin Tejada was one of them. He's £86 million. But there's a, there's a hell of a lot of money involved in these players. Biggest wage is still baked Benz at Arsenal and the Weaver as well. Arsenal, remember, paying huge amounts of money to these players, trying to win something, I guess, with these world-class, talented players in their team. Moving on to our second season today, then. It's now June 2028. The players are a couple weeks off their 29th birthdays. And Josh Holling and Jay Young Park are still at the top of the current ability rankings. This probably won't change much now. We might actually see them going down a bit. They won't go up, I don't think. We might see the odd player improving slightly up until the age of 30. But they've probably hit their limit now. We've not had any players reach 200 this time around. So we will have a look in the extra video. In fact, I'll have a look in the next up update in, in, in um, the third season today we will have a look to see what their potential was so I'll add, and add, I will add a, I'm trying to talk here and failing miserably I will add a column with PA uh, just to see what their potential was and if they managed to reach it or not caps wise Jay Young Parks added to his caps 143 caps it's crazy Aidan Flood still only has one cap for England unfortunately he's a He's a pretty decent striker though for Watford, looking at him. 16 goals this season, 14 in the Premier League, that's not too bad at all. There's just a bit of competition up front for England these days, I guess, with all the players we've added. The next worst player is actually Jeremy Gaines for the Netherlands. He plays for Leicester in the Premier League. But to, to the second lowest to have 11 caps, it shows the quality of all these players. Let's just scroll down once again so you can have a look at the players you're interested in. Andreas Egg took a few years to get off the mark for Germany, but he's certainly he's got he's reached 20 caps now, which is not bad going at all. We've got two Madeira, our Portuguese player, remember, has managed to get 16 goals in 47 games for Portugal. Plays with Burnley now. He it didn't it didn't work out for him at Barcelona, unfortunately. So he's moved to Burnley for 23.5 million where He's proven to be a, a decent striker for them. 17 goals, 15 in the Premier League this season. That's not bad at all. If we keep going down, if there's anything... Ah, Kevin Tejada, 49 goals in 76 games for Argentina. We've got Brian Drew, 78 caps for Georgia. He's one of the worst players in terms of current ability, but he's still a very good international for his country. Ragnarsson has managed to get 25 goals in 83 games for Iceland. King Jiggy's got a good goals to game ratio for Denmark actually. He plays for Barcelona as well. Moved for £62 million. Pounds. Let's keep scrolling down. Down, down and down the list. Ah yes, we haven't really looked at Sithola Dlula. Ah, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce How do you pronounce that? Dlula. Something like that. Anyway, you've got 11 goals in 95 caps for South Africa. Gone a bit under the radar. You moved to Monaco for £33 million. Pounds. Interesting career. Belgium to Portugal to France. Yeah, that's different, isn't it? Alternative footballing career for him. But he's got a lot of caps for his country. Uh, the Weavers got 896 caps for, for Hungary. Doing really well for them. We've got... James Sleater, 98 caps for Northern Ireland. Joel Narble, 98 caps for Switzerland. Sam Austin, 98 caps for San Marino. Having a fine old time with San Marino. 145th in the world rankings. They've definitely improved over the years, thanks to Sam Austin and our other player, who I've forgotten the name of, I'm afraid. <laughs> if we keep going down all the way to the bottom, we've got uh, Remedinio, who's got 104 caps for Gibraltar. Our Chelsea player moved for £46 million from PSG. They made a bit of a loss on him, but had him for a few years, I guess, so that's fine. At League Ambles reached 108 caps for Fiji. I'm pretty sure in the, the last one I did this, on FM16, he only really reached about 60 caps for Fiji because they didn't play that many games. But obviously, this time around, 108 caps for Fiji. They're 139th in the world. And they're doing, yeah, doing pretty well, actually, all things considering. Goals-wise... Daniel Carter III has almost reached 100 for South Korea. That is incredibly impressive from him. If we look at all-time appearances now, Sander Tielemann has broken the 600 mark and Daniel Jordan has as well. Uh, English centre-back, 75 caps for England. He's been at Arsenal a long, long time. Should be a club legend before too long, I'm sure. He's also reached 600. If we look at the lowest, Neville Longbottom Jr. 172 appearances. He's playing in Saudi Arabia now. What a weird career for Neville Longbottom Jr. 
it's really bizarre because Barcelona obviously saw something in him to sign him for 15.25 million. They obviously thought it'd be good enough for them, even though he's one of the worst players in terms of current ability. But it's just bizarre. He started at New York Red Bulls, moved to Juventus, went on loan to Real Sociedad, went on loan to Porto and Malaga and back to Porto, moved to Dynamo Kiev, then Barcelona, and now he's moved to Saudi Arabia, where he's so far scored 10 goals in, in 12 games for them. He should should be decent there, actually, and probably earn a fair bit of money. 135k a week, in fact. So, yeah, he's earning a lot of money over there. More than he probably would be earning in Europe. So he should start to pick up a few more appearances, I guess, in that country. If we look at all-time goals, Daniel Carter the third still leading the way. We've got lots of players that have reached 200 career goals now. Players that haven't scored, it's all the goalkeepers. I don't think any goalkeeper has scored yet clean sheets this season ryan reed leads the way for benfica again and zebu nation for monaco danish bacon 30 for for marseille look at those two in france having very good careers as goalkeepers santa claus as well the the worst is unfortunately anders sandvik for sunderland but i guess it's because he's playing for sunderland who will concede goals that's for sure but it's good that he's a first team regular for sunderland he wasn't at Chelsea remember and Fred Tholorp has been a backup keeper at Man United for years and years I don't know why he's not playing or he hasn't moved to another team he, he is their cup keeper 14 games in the cup as you can see so I guess he's happy to be second fiddle not every goalkeeper in the world can be a number one of course Moving on to average rating, Eric Savenen leading the way again. He's just smashing everything. I don't, don't really know why, but he he did he is. The value of our players will start to go down now because we've almost reached 30, remember. So we're not going to be worth £70 million for much longer. If we go all the way to the bottom of the list, the, the least is Neville Longbottom Jr., £3.9 million. Banana's worth £9 million. <laughs> A £9 million banana. Wage-wise, Bake Benz and the Weaver still at the top. Mark Furlon... Declan through they are swimming in in money the, the lowest is Fred Tholorp backup keeper for Man United 24 and a half thousand pound a week he's still a very rich man earning that much he can definitely get a decent mortgage okay the last update today then in today's video we're age 29 about to be 30 the extra video will come out in the next couple days not exactly sure when it takes quite a long time to record of course <laughs> going through every single player but keep your eyes out for that so we can look at every single player, look at all their profile and history and biography and what they've won, etc. So if you want to, to find out about players individually, then watch that. As you can see, I've added the potential ability column. So we can see what their potential was and whether they reached it. So you can see there were two players that had 200 current, uh, potential ability at the start of this save. Now it's randomized, remember, every save is different. So if you, the, the save file that I put in the first episode, if you load that from the start, it won't be the same every single time. Josh Holling will not have 200 potential ability every time because I've set them to all to minus 10. So it's between 170 and 200. So it's really just luck of the draw, really, I think. It might be based on the attributes I did as well. Um, at mixed with your position except there might be a few factors that have a, have an impact on that but you can see Josh Holling and Jay Young Park both had 200 potential I think Holling reached 197 didn't he so he did pretty well to get close to that 200 Frank O'Hara 199 but the play like look at this Neville Longbottom Jr had the potential to be an incredible player on this series 194 but he only reached 150 there's certain players that just, for whatever reason, they move to the wrong club, they don't have the correct coaches at the team, they're not tutored correctly, they don't get enough game time, they're not trained in the right way, um, and they might not go out on loan at all in their early careers, or they might go to the wrong team to start with. It really can have a massive impact on their overall potential in the end, as you can see there. Also, Nathan Turnock, 176 uh, current ability. I don't know if he reached higher than that but he didn't quite reach his fulfilled promise. 100 caps he's got for the Cook Islands, which is very impressive, I must say. He's playing for Marseille now. But yeah, I think he's still obviously a very good player, but didn't quite reach what he should have done. If we just scroll down the list, you can have a look and just compare the potential and current ability yourself. Luigi Balotelli also wasn't 
as good as he should have done. Aiden Flood had the potential to be quality, didn't quite get there. Uh, Johan Persson also disappointed. Well, not necessarily disappointed, just didn't quite reach it. But there's so many players in history that, you know, they burst on the scene when they're 18, 19, and they just don't fulfill their promise. Matthias Orchard, 149 current ability instead of 183. It's a shame, but that's just the way it goes, I guess, with this. You can't have a happy ending to every single story, I, I suppose. Thomas Barrow as well, a little bit disappointing. Every player had at least 171 potential, as you can see there. But, is there anyone that actually got better? I don't know if it's possible to go above what you were, your potential was. I don't think it's physically possible on the game. Um, if you look at Michael Duncan, he def he reached his 172 current ability, so he fulfilled his maximum promise that God gave him at the start of this save. He wasn't born to go higher than 172, and he reached it. The Weaver reached his potential, which is good to see. So, although some of these players you, you weren't as good during the save, at least you actually met your promise. Eric Sivenen, he remember he's won World Player of the Year three times in a row he's actually towards the bottom of this list in terms of what his potential was but he reached that potential and utilized every millimeter of that potential to win multiple world player of the year titles and do very very well for Man City anyway moving on Jay Young Park still leading the way in terms of caps there will be certain players that have probably retired from international duty I don't think Jay Young Park has though no it doesn't say it usually says on the the initial profile. Um, ben Canny for England, 118 caps, doing really well to to do that. He might actually beat the the record. I guess Rooney has the probably has the record on this. If we just have a look, uh, records most caps. Oh, to, oh, to, oh, Rousey is all-time top goal scorer. That's very impressive. So he's beating everyone's record records there. Uh, who's got the most caps? Where does it say most cap player? Oh, it's Sam Reynolds, are one of our players has managed to get the most caps for England so well done to him I didn't notice him on the list in fact if we just go back where is he why is he not at the top where's Sam Reynolds gone that's really confusing maybe he, maybe I didn't ever include him in the in the, in the shortlist what's happened here ah how strange Sam Reynolds is definitely one of our players isn't he let's investigate guys I'm very confused as to what's happened here have we not ever added him to our play shortlist? Which one was it? I've got two, Betty. That one. That's quite funny. So, Sam Reynolds, you've never actually told me that you I missed you out, unless I've missed your comment. I am assuming you're not actually watching the series then, because you haven't mentioned that you weren't. Unless you were in the playlist and it's just vanished. But you can't have been, because... Uh, he, he is a player, isn't he? Oh no, he's a different player. He's an actual real life player, isn't he? No, he's 29. No, and he was one on the 1st of July. He's not a real life player. Ugh, well, that's confusing. Anyway, he's on the play. He's on the shortlist now. But that's really so. You might, if, if those of you that have downloaded the save and had a play on this and downloaded the shortlist, you might have come across someone called Sam Reynolds. He wasn't on the shortlist and thought, who is this chap who's destroying everyone? Yeah. So I don't know how good he is compared to everyone else. But he's probably up there because he's managed to get 134 caps for England, which is very impressive indeed. Anyway, we've, we've moving on. Goals-wise, the top goal scorer, Daniel Carter the third, 115 goals in 130 games for Bayern Munich. Brilliant stuff. Uh, Daniel Gannon, 94 goals in 115 games. Jake Linham, 89. Sean Watson, 87. They're all doing very, very well. Some of these players. Of course, Sam Reynolds, if I hadn't introduced you at the start, you wouldn't have known you were in the series anyway. But there you go, you get a special mention. <laughs> because I somehow missed you off the short... I don't know what happened there, I do apologise. But you get a special mention today, I guess, for for not being included beforehand. If we look at all-time appearances, then Sam Reynolds is at the top. Of all the players to be at the top, it's him. So he, he, he wasn't actually that high in terms of current ability, but he's... He's managed to get 134 caps for England without us noticing. He's been a Man United legend for many years. And he's played the most club games in his career out of every single player. <laughs> uh, that's, that's just funny how these things happen, I guess. Well, there we go. He shoots to the top of the all-time appearances charts. There's plenty of players that have reached 
500 plus appearances, there's a few that have managed to get 600 or more, which is very impressive. The lowest now is still Neville Longbottom Jr. despite playing in Saudi Arabia. He's the only player that hasn't reached 200 appearances at club level. All-time goals, Daniel Carter III leading the way, just ahead of Ben Chapman and Rousey. A few goals behind him, King Jiggy up there, but there's plenty of players that have reached 200 now. I have, which is good to see. I've, I've become a Roma legend, I think. Keep scoring for them. Lovely stuff from me. 87 caps for the Cayman Islands and 10 goals as well. 174th in the world rankings. Brilliant stuff. Um, looking at this year, appearances, Declan threw 60 appearances for Arsenal. That's very impressive. Goals-wise, Daniel Gannon, top goal scorer, then King Jiggy. Assists-wise, it was uh, Punkle Flufen, 34. Kaku Commons is... And you've got 18 this year. He's, he's slacking. Clean sheets. Danish bacon top. 35 clean sheets for Marseille. That's pretty impressive, I must say. Value-wise, top is Zebu Nation. A goalkeeper worth £47.5 million. 99 caps for USA. He's been at Monaco for a long, long time now. And... Wow. That's... That's really impressive for a goalkeeper to be worth that much. They got, like I said a couple episodes ago, the goalkeepers will start to rise as the other players drip off, drop off because goalkeepers could, I mean, he might play until he's 40 years old, of course, whereas some of our strikers might only play until they're 32. Wage-wise, uh, still the Arsenal quartet at the top of that list, earning ridiculous money. Then we've got PSG, Man City, Real Madrid, Barcelona players, you know, the usual suspects you'd expect to be earning that much but look how many people are earning over two hundred thousand pound a week that is ridiculous it really is lowest wage i assume is still yeah fred tholorp then ryan re i mean there's not many players aren't earning under one hundred thousand pounds a week on this save that is crazy ah ivana hump trump we haven't looked at him properly 74 caps of wales plays with burnley who've spent a bit of money lately haven't they Really quite interesting. I just want to look at the, the club list. In fact, loads of Arsenal players. Bayern Munich, three Burnley players, few Chelsea, Barcelona, Leverkusen have three players, Liverpool have a few, Man City have a few, Man, City, uh, Man United have a lot as well. As to Marseille, they've got four. PSG have got a few. As to Real Madrid, Schalke have three. Tottenham have four. And West Brom still have four players. They, They've signed a lot and they've, they've done all right over the years, I guess. In fact, they've turned into a top 10 pr uh, Premier League team. They finished fourth at one point, but they haven't finished outside the top 10 for a number of seasons because, because of the players they've signed, I would say. They've done done really well. This this is quite insane. Eric Sivenen, our Finnish maestro, has won six Ballon d'Ors in a row now. Wow. As we've seen, he's not the best player in terms of current ability, but he has been clinical in creating goals and scoring goals and getting insane average ratings over the years. So he deserves it. The game definitely takes into account the average rating a player achieves. If it's very high, then they're likely to be on this list. He's also won six World Player of the Year awards. In the last three years, we saw Kagu Commons finish second and, and Jay Young Park finish third. The year after... Dybala was on there ahead of Kagu Commons and then the year just gone it was actually Mbappe ahead of Kevin Tejeda. So we've had a variety of players featuring but the only player to win World Player of the Year and FIFA Player of the Year, FIFA Ballon d'Or whatever you want to call it, has been Eric Sivenen. So surely there's no question who's to been the best player of the series. He didn't reach the, the highest current ability, he only had potential of 175 remember. But because of winning these awards, how can you say anyone else has been better? World Team of the Year then, last three seasons. I don't think we've ever managed to get a goalkeeper in there. De Gea is still in there. We've got Anik Akhamed. We haven't really looked at him previously, but he's been at Real Madrid for a few years now. 101 caps for Switzerland as well. Uh, is this one of our players? It is. Nikola Knezovic for PSG. Moved for £43 million. Pounds. And doing, uh, he's a he's a regen. So we've got a few regens in there. Joshua Gawley as well, another PSG player. Jayon Park, Serenin of course, to Jada, Kagu Commons, the Weaver. A few few interest. There's, there's a variety in there. Sam Reynolds managed to make it this year. And who else? Messi still on there. Uh, is this? Oh, this is all seasons. That's why. So looking at all seasons, this is 
the World Team of the Year, Sam Reynolds, Kagu Common, Sivenen and Scotland Serenity are on that list. So well done to them. These are the top transfers, I think, by year. So you can see Joshua Gawley is the, the world record fee going from Man City to PSG for £119 million. Pounds. That is ridiculous, isn't it? De Os Os Osumana Dembele is next. But Josh Downard, £104 million pounds from Dortmund to Man City. I missed out on that one, but that is an insane fee as well. We've got... Uh, El Bucco on that list, ninety-three million pounds. Hugh Shate, Kevin Tejada on there, Rousey, Oof, a lot of money. So we'll end it there for today's video. Thank you for watching episode six of Emulating Jack Young. There will be an extra video where I look at every single player in detail, and in the process, we'll have a look at who's won various competitions as well around the world, various leagues, and that sort of thing. Going forwards after that. We'll probably do a couple more videos basically until all the players retire. So the last video might encompass a few years, but obviously there'll be less and less players in those years to look at. As always, if you can smash that like button, that'd be much appreciated. I will see you in the next video of Emulating Jack Young.